You talked a, a while ago about the high school teachers, Morehouse, good enough for me, why isn't that good enough for you, and the friendships. You write about friendships that are strained because you've made this choice to step outside the mold. Um, what other times have you felt this pressure to do what everybody else is doing? And well, I think that social it. pressure just sort of goes along mm -hmm. in any kind of situation. But it's not, uh, it's not, un, it's not unusual. Uh, Ray Mavis, a former governor of Mississippi, a friend of mine, uh, went to the Navy, came back from the Navy. He had gone to undergraduate school in Mississippi, and it was a big party for him. And uh, uh, a great aunt is there, and she comes and she says, now, Ray, darling, I understand you're going to law school. And he says, yes. She says, where are you going to law school? She says, uh, he says, uh, aunt, so and so, I'm going to law school at Harvard University. And as she fanned, she said, what's the matter? You couldn't get in Ole Miss? Yeah. <laughs> my, my point is that, is that there, is, there is a provincialism where mm -hmm. people expect you to follow a certain tradition. And so these high school teachers who had gone to Morehouse or Morris Brown or Clark and were good teachers thought that my being a good student meant that I should follow in their footsteps. And so to step out of that tradition is jolting sometimes yes but how do you what what makes you step out of it i mean someone else would have said oh okay i will go to morehouse or clark or well Marsburg. i've just always followed my own intuition it was it was different it was a challenge it was it was something out of the ordinary that i decided on my own to do mind you julian that august 15th my birthday 1953 before I went my mother wrote me a note left it on my bed and said we want you to go wherever you want to go but if you go to Howard socially financially academically you might be better off but you make your own decision mm -hmm. so even my the CEO of my life mm -hmm. was concerned about my ability to adjust in that circumstance. Now, they took me to school. Uh, there's this incredible scene at East College the night that they're leaving me. My brother Windsor, my youngest brother, shakes my hand, rushes off to the car, happy that for the first time in his life, he's a, he's a big man. He's got the bed in the bathroom yeah. to himself, uh -huh. and the bedroom to himself. My mother, tears and eyes, hugs me. Uh, slips fifty dollars in my hand and says god bless you son my father shakes my hand and says you can't come home i said what do you mean he said you can't come home i said what do you mean daddy he says the counselor says that you're reading less than 200 words a minute and your classmates are reading between 600 and 800 a minute which means when you're reading History of Civilization, they'll be in chapter six and you'll be struggling to get out of the preface, mm -hmm. but you can't come home. He said in 1951, you used a plain geometry book that had been used by a white student in 1935, but you can't come home. So I said, what am I supposed to do, Daddy? He said, read, boy, read. That's all he said. And that's how he left me before I went into that assembly at East College where I was the only black in my class. Read, boy, read. And when I graduated four years ago, my brother came and shook my hand. My mother, tears and eyes, gave me $100. My father just walks up to me, shakes my hand, and says, you can come home now. Mm. Just, I've never forgotten that. And that was, that was, I mean, I understood what I had to do. 